In this video, I'm just going to demonstrate how to use Logic 2010 and the invalidities questions. Uh, you can see here I have Logic 2010 open and I already have a question queued up. Over here I just have OneNote open because uh, I find it very helpful to sort of make notes as I uh, examine um, invalidities and interpretations and models. So you'll see that in this question I need to make the following argument invalid. So I need to make the first premise true, the second premise true, and the conclusion false. Now I can always just make little notes to myself. The first premise just says there is something that's a G. So something is a G. No problem. The second premise says, for all x, gx, arrow, hx. This says, all g's are h's. And then the th conclusion says, everything is an h. Now remember, if I want this to be invalid, I want the conclusion to actually be false. So if I want it to be false, what I really want is for there to be something is not an h. Because if everything is an H, then to make it false, there, uh, it just means something is not an H. So now that I have this uh, basic translation ready to go, I can actually do the model. And it's not that difficult. You just have to know how to manipulate Logic 2010. So under Size of the Universe, you click to Set, and you can just select how many elements you want in your model. Now typically for an interpretation or model, I always start with two, uh, and I can make adjustments as I need. Now, if something is a G, it doesn't really matter which element of my universe of discourse I pick, so I'm just going to let that thing be my zero. Fine. And now it says all Gs are H. No problem. So that means if uh, G, sorry, if zero is a G, that means zero also has to be H. And notice I can just select which ones I want, and so I'm selecting that zero is an H. Now, is it true that something is not an H? Actually, it is, because 1 is in my universe, and H, uh, 1 is not an H, so I've made my conclusion false. Now, at this point, I can check, and you can see that it says correct. Now, what if I had actually gotten it wrong? Uh, for example, what if I had actually put 1 in here, uh, and then it says G01? If I hit check, it actually gives me this readout. It tells me that I've made the first premise true, the second premise false, and the conclusion false. So I know that I've done something wrong, and I need to fix the second premise such that it will end up being true. So you can just go fix the problem, hit check again, it says correct, and that's how you do an invalidity. I'm just going to do one more that has multi-place relations, so you can sort of see another example. Again, it's an invalidity with two premises and a conclusion, and I just have to set the size of my universe and then set what's in my R and B predicates. Uh, so I do a quick translation, and I look at premise one. Premise one says, well, it actually says two things. It says RXY and RYX, but we just have to remember that X is some specific member of my universe of discourse, and Y is all members of my UD. So the first thing says some specific specific thing R's everything. And and it also says everything R's that specific thing. So I have to make sure that's true. Now in premise two, it says for all x, bx, arrow, not r, x, x. What does this mean? It says if you are a b, then you don't r yourself. No problem. Now the conclusion here is a little tricky because I want this to be false and it's a positive universal right now. So if I want it to be false, it suffices that I can just sort of make a quick um, uh, manipulation here, a simple derivation. And if, so if I want uh, this to be false, I actually want this to be true. And all I did was add a negation in front. But from here, I can actually do a couple other things. I can do a quantifier negate, and I get this. And so it's this that I actually want to be true. And finally, I can actually do a little negation of biconditional and get this. So in the end, it's this thing on the bottom that I would like to be true. So what I want to be true is that there is something that is B and ours itself. And that's what it would mean to, for the conclusion to be false. So notice this is very informal. I did moves that aren't allowed in the derivation, like I did a negation of biconditional inside the existential, and I also paired it with the double negate. But these things don't matter when we're just trying to find equivalencies. OK, so now that I have this, I'm ready to actually try and create my interpretation or model. Again, I'm going to start with a, a 
size of the universe being 2, and I'm just going to think about it. Well, I need some specific thing that r is everything. Well, let's just call that specific thing 0. So if it r is everything, it has to say 0, 0, and 0, 1, because it will r everything. So my specific thing uh, is 0. And everything has to r that specific thing. So that means that the 0 element has to appear on the right side of the ordered pair for both 0 and 1. Well, it appears here for 0, but now I need it to appear for 1. OK. Now at this point, if I look at premise 2, it says, if you're a b, then you don't r yourself. That's actually trivially true right now, because I don't have anything that's a b. No problem. And now I look at the conclusion. I want this to be true. There is something that is b uh, and r itself. Uh, well, I can actually just make this work by leaving b empty. And if you think about it, the reason why is because the first, the second premise is saying that if you're b, you can't r yourself, and then th the conclusion is saying something if you're b, then you have to r yourself. So the easiest way to make all that true is just to have nothing be a b. Now, keep in mind. It, I didn't actually make the conclusion true. Remember, I made the negation of the conclusion true, which is to say I made the conclusion false. As always, if I had made a mistake here by putting 0 into b and I hit check, it would tell me I got the first premise true, the second premise false, and the conclusion false, which means that I just need to fix the second uh, premise. So again, just go back, deselect it, check, and it says correct. So that's how you do invalidities and interpretations in Logic 2010. Just remember to set the size of the universe first before you start anything. Good luck.